Hi guys, thanks for checking out the channel. In this video, we're taking out an old heat only cast iron boiler and replacing it with a light commercial valent system boiler and using a plate to plate heat exchanger to separate it from the old central heating system. Okay, let me just give you a run through of this job. So as you can see, big old beautiful house. Now it is a domestic property. It's no longer in commercial use. And we have already taken out the old um, ideal Concord boiler that is located in the basement. So as you can see here, we've had to separate it because it weighed so much. So we broke that apart yesterday took us a hell of a long time to get that sorted out it was completely seized so we've got the boiler in bits that's now removed now the central heating system is open vented here apart from the top floor which is actually running off a smaller domestic gas boiler on a pressurized system so the boiler locations down in the basement 28 mil pipe bender I'm going to try and utilize that today so where we're going to be working I keep banging my head on that there is right down here at the bottom of the property now, the boiler flue was obviously open. It went all the way up for a chimney, but that's not how we're gonna be rerouting this new boiler. So, as you can see, flexible liner here, and then that dropped down into the old boiler, which is on the floor. So, we have just OSB'd all the walls, and we've cut back a lot of the pipe work, and we put lever valves on it, just so we didn't have water dripping overnight once we'd cut all the pipe work. So, down here was the old ventilation, which I thought was pretty, pretty unique but the boiler hadn't been working for a long long time i think it had been pretty much condemned and unfortunately the uh customer had problems trying to get this job done so we're here now to get this all complete so let me just run you through what we've done so far so obviously boiler has been removed and this boiler was running free central heating zone so we've got flow and return there flow and return there flow and return there and we also believe we've got a cold feed and open vent from our header tank which will show you how we're going to pipe that up in a bit so what we're going to be doing is use in a light commercial valence system boiler pretty sure it's 64 kilowatts customer has actually provided this one although i am a fan of this boiler we've used it plenty of times before and um, yeah, we're gonna stick that on the wall there. Now the biggest headache is the flue. So because we're in a basement and we don't, or we can't go through the front of the house, we're having to run it all the way through this downstairs hallway. So we're nearly at the limitations of this border in terms of flue length. So you're allowed a maximum of 15 meters and I think we're at about 12. So yesterday we spent a lot of time taking that old boiler apart and coring through uh, to accommodate this new flue. So the biggest pain was this one up here. So that is a nine inch concrete wall. And I'm not joking, that probably took me about three hours to get through that. So as you can see, we've got our laser set up, just making sure we get our boiler center exactly right with our flue holes. And that's gonna go through there. So quite a lot of obstacles to get past. Unfortunately, this light is right in the way of where we want the flue to go. We've had to obviously keep our minimum distances away from the windows, etc. So luckily that uh, light is just sort of like dangling off that cable there. So it can be moved quite easily. So the majority of this job really then is to relocate this pipe work into this boiler room. So originally they had zone valve up here, zone valve here. We're actually gonna now run this new pipe work quite neatly or as neatly as we possibly can over onto this OSB wall. We're then going to have all our zone valves in here and our returns dropping down onto a 35 mil sort of flow and return, which then goes, obviously flowed through our pump, return to our filter. That will then go onto our plate to plate heat exchanger and then boiler on the wall here. Now this part of the system is actually going to be pressurized. So we've got the valent boiler on the wall, small little pressurized circuit here. Fortunately enough, there is a cold water main in here, which is ideal. And uh, yeah, we're just about now to begin to think, start uh, piping it all up. So just got that laser set up to get our boiler centered. We're gonna get that hung and then we can start making a plan of action of how all our pipe work's gonna go.
Right, we're starting to make a bit of progress now in this little plant room. So let me just go through some of the design choices. Now, you've just seen us assemble this um, plate to plate heat exchanger. Now, this was probably the thing that was keeping me most awake at night was making sure this was sized up correctly. So I've actually purchased this from a company called Nordic Tech. I'm pretty sure it's from Poland. Now, I've done quite a lot of low temperature training and stuff like that recently that includes sizing up plate to plate heat exchangers. And when I'd worked out myself, I'd actually size it up slightly smaller than this one that the manufacturer or Nordic Tech had actually recommended. So I went against my advice and went for the one slightly bigger. So hopefully we'll be okay because if that is wrong, then all of this isn't gonna work correctly. So I think, that was about 500 quid, so I didn't think it was too bad. So came with all the insulation and all the brass fittings, back plate, etc. You can find these actually on eBay, but they have a proper website and they're really quite helpful. I think um, like rough calculations, um, every 10 kilowatt per boiler is about 0 0.3 meters of plate space or surface area on the plate. So, but. Um, you're best off speaking to the manufacturer and getting them to select one for you. So under here, we've got these large isolation valves just to shut off the flow and return to the boiler. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this valent, this is a domestic boiler at 64 kilowatts, so it's just underneath the uh, sort of commercial bracket. Works really, really well, exactly like an Ecotec Plus. Um, we'll take you a look through some of the internals when we're wiring it all up. So out of here then, so we have got our cold feeding open vent dropping in here off of our plate. So this is our flow. And then we're going for a Wilo pump. This is a 10 meter head Wilo pump. We've used this before previously on another job. Absolute beast. I've never had a pump run as well as this. Quite a basic display on it, but you can change um, you know, your head pressure and uh, reduce it down if you need. That might be quite important because this is open vent. Obviously, we don't want anything spilling over the top. So on this sort of like manifold jig we're setting up here, we're just dropping in our flow and returns. And this is where that 28 mil pipe bender really uh, pays for itself. So as you can see here, all these fittings we would have had to use to drop these in, but Bailey has been quite patient. He's pulled some beautiful bends here and dropped that in lovely. So if we can get three of those in side by side, that's gonna look really good and also save us a lot of money. Um, we also solder all these. So any plant room you can access, you should really be soldering now. Press fitting we've been doing for a long, long time. It's great in kitchen cupboards, lofts and stuff, but anywhere you can access, you wanna be soldering. Come on guys, sort it out, right. <laughs> so that's about it. That's about as far as we've got at the moment. Um, we've got our uni strut on the wall here. Um, this is by Wallraven. I think this is called Rapid Rail, sorry. And then just our Euro clips. Really, really easy system to use. They just quarter turn, twist and lock in, and we can just slide them all into position. And I've just started to get some of the pipe work through up here. So again, just using that pipe bender. Looks a little bit messy at the moment because we haven't got them in position. But just pulling them through into the boiler room so all our zone valves can be located in here. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just put the hoover on this open vent and cold feed just to confirm that is exactly what it's going to be. So I can get those pipes up. And then our filter has just arrived, which I'll just show you quickly because it's not one that I've used before, but it's from a brand or company called IMI Hydronics. Now a lot of you will be familiar with this company. They do some good quality components. Apparently, this has a very, very good flow rate. Comes all pre-insulated. Got inch and a quarter connections on that. And it is magnetic as well. But I must admit, I was surprised how small it was in size, but I guess it's the motion in the ocean that counts. So if we take all that insulation off, it looks very similar to a spire across, but reading all the reviews and everything, it's supposed to be very, very good. So we shall put that into a test.
Okay, if you are wondering how we're gonna get that giant flue in, we have taken it outside, we have pre-built it, self-tappers and all, and we're just gonna slide it through this hole here. So yeah, hopefully it will just go as easy as I imagine in my mind. No doubt we'll get snagged on something. So yeah, we'll feed it through and then we'll put the brackets on afterwards. So I think at the moment what we got, two, four, six, about eight meters worth. So should be nearly at the boiler room with that. Okay, that's it. All the copper pipe work is now in place and we are just filling up the open vented side of the system. So the pressurized side, it's only that small circuit over there. So that was easy enough to fill up and check. And we've just hoovered out the feeding expansion vessel, made sure that's super clean. And we are just filling it on the cold feed, which is that blue isolation valve over there. So. Yes, yeah, filling up seems to be absolutely fine. We've got all the isolation valves open now, just going up to the radiator. So we shut off all the bleed valves and we're just slowly filling up that central heating system. So we're not actually gonna bleed it all through today because we are gonna be uh, flushing it out. Um, yeah, blasting through the chemicals, etc. So as you can see, we've got the ESI zone valves on there, 28 mil. Um, Bailey's done a really, really good job on this section. Really happy with it. Two bends with a 28 mil, just to sort of pass underneath that flow there into the return, which is awesome. Got the IMI uh, filter down there on the bottom, so I've got high hopes for that. Like I say, I've heard really good things, so hopefully it's as good as people say. And looking forward to seeing what this Wilo pump can do on this system. Right, we are fully operational now. So we're all wired up and we have had the central heating running overnight on the magna cleans. Now, we thought that we would give this little Zipparo IMI filter a bit of a test. So what we've done is, while we're flushing it through, we've actually left it in position and put the magna cleanse on directly afterwards just to see how much sludge and debris this thing actually misses. So. I'm expecting this to be pretty clogged up by now. Um, but in fairness, every time we've sort of like drained this down or worked on the system, it has been very clean. So I would imagine it was looked after, even though the boiler was incredibly old. So quite excited to see exactly what we find in these filters. Now, um, earlier on in the video and in this installation, I made a huge mistake and I had got the cold feed and open vent around the wrong way around. Now I should definitely know better. I've been in the industry a long time basic central heating design so yes make sure that you put the open vents before the cold feed otherwise you'll have what we had where the pump was just sucking in air right we are now flushing through the system and it's time to find out how much sludge and debris this imi filter has missed now this actually incorporates a dry pocket magnet which isn't quite as satisfying as opening up those Addy filters and seeing how much sludge and debris you got inside. Now when we flushed this through, there was quite a bit of uh, crap that came out into this bucket. And I've just taken out these filters just to see what this might have missed overnight while we're running it through with the chemicals. And I'm happy to report it's hardly anything at all. So I thought these would have been totally full up because this is a large system here, probably 30 plus radiators, but this filter's done incredibly well. So either this central heating system was incredibly clean to start with, or this filter, small but mighty, has done a really good job. So we are um, we're now gonna take it apart, put the pipe back on, get rid of this Addy filter, and get all these radiators run through, balance, and make sure that everything is operating all okay. Okay, that's us pretty much wrapped up on this one. Pipe work is now all insulated and we're just going around checking the final radiator. So let me just show you briefly inside this light commercial valent boiler. So this is 64 kilowatt. You're able to install it if you're a domestic gas installer. So simple things really, big pressure gauge inside on the left hand side, very good size pump as well. 
And as you can see, it's just a huge heat exchanger like you'd find in your standard Ecotech Plus. So basically a standard Ecotech Plus just made a bit bigger. So the only thing it does lack is an expansion vessel. So we've had to accommodate one on this small pressurized circuit. Otherwise the PRV will give way. So Grundfos condense pump. So I didn't realize that these pumps can actually take away PRV from a boiler as well. So it can't do an unvented cylinder, but it can do the PRV from the boiler. So condense and PRV going into that. Filling loop just to fill up this uh, small pressurized circuit. Now the plate to plate heat exchanger has surpassed my expectations. It's working brilliantly in terms of temperatures. All the radiators is getting lovely and hot and the boiler is modulating really well, which is awesome. Now, what else have we got going on? So cold feeding open vent. I got them around the wrong way, pretty embarrassing. Piped it back out the right way. Everything's now operating okay and the pump is running a lot more quieter. Got the pump on variable speed at the moment, but it's running at 10, which is its maximum operating pressure, which is great, but we've got it on the variable setting so it can adjust the suit. And then the ESI zone valves. I like these because you just get this LED indicator. So it's nice and easy to know which one's on or not. We've wired back in the two original Honeywell thermostats or wireless thermostats. Um, and we've um, connected up a new Honeywell stat for the upstairs floor. And yeah, the ES, not ESI, the IMI um, magnetic filter. That's worked really, really well quite pleased with that the system to be fair is actually pretty clean so it's obviously had maintenance over the years and inhibitor had it added so yeah that's pretty much us done on this one so thank you very much for watching this video hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully catch you on the next one